Privacy Shield is down, and the highest European court has thrown major doubt on the legitimacy of the next most popular method for transfers of personal data to the US. Responses from regulators range from the UK's keep calm and carry on to the Berlin DPA's take your data out of the US now message. This is huge. There's lots for privacy specialists and academics here, but we're going to set out what happened and the practical impact in plain language. And stick around as we'll set out strategies and five action points to move forward while we wait for updated guidance from authorities. Hi, I'm Robert Bohr, the founder and CEO of Keepable, the award-winning solution saving you time, money and stress on GDPR, giving you a great answer on privacy for the board and customers. This video is part of Privacy Kitchen, free video help with GDPR and all things privacy. If you're new here, please click subscribe and notify to hear about new awesome Privacy Kitchen videos. As I say, links are in the notes below as always. Okay, so first, if you're not sure what a transfer is, pause this here, go and see our video, what's a transfer for GDPR. So the big news on 16th July 2020 was that Privacy Shield was invalidated in a case called Schrems 2. In a move that was reasonably predictable, the top court in Europe declared that Privacy Shield did not actually provide equivalent protection, so the adequacy decision for Privacy Shield was invalid. Therefore, as from 16th July 2020, Privacy Shield is dead in terms of GDPR the court decided not to put a transitional period in place. So what do organizations do now? Now, if you're in the UK, the UK ICO has released a statement that they're reviewing their guidance in light of the court case, but to continue using Privacy Shield if you are already, but not to start if you aren't already. So this is our first action point. Decide if you're following the UK ICO's advice. It would be hard for them to bring enforcement proceedings for following their own advice. And many organizations are adopting this wait and see approach anyway to see if a new adequacy decision can be rapidly achieved. But if you're not comfortable with that, and it is technically a breach of GDPR, what do you do now? Well, GDPR itself says that if there's no adequacy decision under Article 45, then you look to an appropriate safeguard under Article 46. This is our second action point. Look at your data map and identify which activities have transfers to the USA and which of those transfers rely on Privacy Shield or SCCs or another basis. Keep that list handy. Now, standard contractual clauses. We've seen that you first look at Article 45 and only move to Article 46 if there's no adequacy decision. So that's what we'll do now. Article 46 gives a short list of appropriate safeguards, the most common and popular of which is standard contractual clauses or SCCs. Happily, the court decided that SCCs are still a valid mechanism and the existing versions which desperately need updating are good to use. This is great. And this is our third action point. If you're not following the UK ICO guidance or you're looking for new transfers to the US, take your list of transfers to the US and look to see where SCCs can be put in place. Now in practice, most US cloud providers have a GDPR compliant data processing addendum or DPA. It's in their terms, it's on their website, you can sign it at will. I'd recommend doing that now. Get them in place ASAP. At least you've taken an action to plug the gap with a valid mechanism. Then you can carry on with your review, which we'll look at now. Because the court decided that you, yes you, the organization that's subject to GDPR, wanting to use the SCCs, you need to check that they work in your particular case by reviewing the context of the transfer, including the laws of the country you're exporting to and their surveillance laws, for example, and decide if supplemental measures are needed. This isn't just about the US, it's about any country, so Russia, China, etc. But let's just leave those to the side for the moment. This is our fourth action point. If you're looking to use SCCs for the US, then you do need to do that review. In summary for the USA, which is the focus here, the key surveillance law in question is Section 702 of FISA, FISA. It applies to a telecoms carrier, which is pretty clear. A provider of electronic communication services, which at the minimum captures email and messaging services. And the key one is it applies to a provider of remote computing service, which captures Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, etc. And it also applies to any other communication service provider who has access to communications when transmitted or stored, and of course all of their employees, etc. So if you do use G Suite, Office 365, Azure, AWS, Salesforce, HubSpot, and other cloud services, the starting point is SCCs on their own are unlikely to work. You need to look at supplemental measures. Now, if the recipient doesn't fall into those categories, 
Does it use them in their own supply chain? If yes, then it's still a problem. And if that recipient isn't one of these companies and they don't use them in their own supply chain, you're potentially good to use SCCs as they stand, but you still need to do that review. There's an excellent IAPP webinar with Max Schrems himself and Eduardo Usteran, which includes a discussion of this and the links below, I recommend you watch it. So how are you doing? Are you feeling like relying on the UK ICO guidance yet? Okay, let's continue. So on supplemental measures, the day after Schrems 2, the European Data Protection Body, the body of EEA regulators helpfully said that they're looking further into what those additional measures could consist of. Right. Now, at present, no one really knows what measures will be accepted or appropriate. Contenders, though, that you might look at, they encrypt your data before it leaves the EEA. Uh, otherwise, disable access by recipients in the US. Or don't store outside the EEA, only allow those outside the EEA to view with no download access. Of course, if you store your data in the EEA and it's never transferred, so there's no access from outside the EEA, then you don't need to worry. Or do you? Because if you have a cloud provider in the EA that's the European arm of a US entity, that may be a problem. But let's deal with what's in front of us now and leave that for later. This all highlights the need to have thought about this. If possible, have supplemental measures you can point to that you argue make the SECs a valid route. Article 46 also includes binding corporate rules. These are great, but they're very rarely used. Across Europe, there are only 140 approved before GDPR and only five in the two years since. They can take up to two years to put in place. They're expensive and time consuming. So while they're fantastic, they're statistically and practically irrelevant for now. So let's just round up where we got to. Privacy Shield is no longer valid as a transfer mechanism to the USA under Article 45. So you move on to Article 46 and probably SCCs, which still work in theory, but you need to review the context of the transfer and the law of the third country, not just the US, any third country, and decide if you need supplemental measures. If you don't follow the UK ICO advice and you can't make SECs work for your transfer, is there anything else that can be done to help you transfer to the US? Yes, but it's very limited. Our fifth action point is to see if any derogations in Article 49 work for you. The court left Article 49 alone. In fact, it said it was the reason it saw no need for a transition period, which I think is a very punchy statement indeed, and here's why. Now, the EDPB's guidance on Article 49 makes clear it's the last resort. They state that these derogations are only for use when Article 45 and 46 aren't of use. The derogations are just that and must be interpreted restrictively so that the exception does not become the rule. Now, for most organisations, the only grounds in Article 49 you're likely to be looking at are the first three. And if you're public sector, these derogations can't apply to activities carried out by public authorities in the exercise of their public powers. Number one is explicit consent to the proposed transfer. After the data subject's been told about the possible risks of transfers for them due to the absence of an adequacy decision and appropriate safeguards. Number two is necessary for the performance of a contract between the data subject and the controller or implementation of pre-contractual measures at the data subject's request. Note the word necessary. And number three is close to number two. It's necessary for the conclusion or performance of a contract concluded in the interest of the data subject. Now the EDPB states that explicit consent has to be to the particular transfer. This suggests it has to be a separate consent all on its own. And they note that GDPR's recital 111 says the contract basis not only has to be necessary, but also occasional. So not exactly the wealth of opportunity the court seemed to suggest. So there we go, the practical impact of Schrems 2 for now. Do keep an eye out for updated advice from authorities. It's changing rapidly. But we have been able to set out a pathway of five action points to explore for transfers to the USA. So please do like if you enjoyed the video. Please do look at our other Privacy Kitchen videos like what is a transfer for GDPR. Please do visit us at keepable.com and please do use hashtag Privacy Kitchen to join the conversation and tell us what topics and questions you'd like us to cover. Stay well in the meantime and see you soon in Privacy Kitchen.